Hi everybody, it's Dr. Laura Dessauer, the Creativity Queen, and I am serving up nuggets of information to get you through these challenging times because I, I don't know when you're going to be viewing this video and hopefully it'll land in the right hands, but it, it, this is hard. This time period that, that we're in right now, um, actually there's a, a moon that's going to be eclipsing a full lunar eclipse next week. So we're in November into the election season in 2022. Um, there's a lot of energies being stirred up and I'm inviting you to take some time to ground yourself. And we've got a lot of tools and tips that I'm sharing. Hopefully you're testing them out, getting some, you know, feel for these activities. I wanna bring in some art activities and I'd like to pair an idea, an art activity um, with um, a, an approach, a therapeutic approach. So one of the therapeutic approaches is narrative therapy. And narrative therapy was by Dr. White. He was like the innovator. I don't even, I'm thinking in the 90s is when it came out. I remember studying it in school and thinking, wow, this is really interesting. And it talks a lot about um, you know, understanding our own personal narrative. It's almost like our personal mythology. And for those of you who like mythology, I do like a bit of mythology myself. Um, we have this capacity to make meaning out of our life stories. And, and sometimes that can be helpful and sometimes it's not very helpful at all, especially if the meaning that we're making is one that is very negative or tends to run into the same patterns happen and I'm incapable and I'm incompetent. These types of stories, these types of narratives that we tell ourselves can be counterproductive, right? So we wanna look at our resilience, our, our post, traumatic growth and in the eyes of our experiences what have we survived and how have we as a result grown through the, our experiences what are the strengths that we've discovered and and the people that we've found who support us during during challenging times how do we look at our lives in this kind of place of mythology where we're the hero in our story and the hero has experience or heroine, of course, <laughs> or whatever you want to be. Uh, and they, the hero or heroine has experiences of challenges and, and of course, tests. And they go through maybe the dark night of the soul. And, and many of us are in the dark night of the soul right now, where it's feeling like, how do I get through this dark place? Where are my guides? Where are the people around that can help me through this place? And maybe it's spiritual. You're finding some ways to practice spirituality to help you through this place. Or you have a great therapist. You have friends that listen. But not everybody has these things. So we can look at ourselves and our own inner resources. How have we done this in the past? This isn't the first time, right? Not our first rodeo for hardship. So how have we handled things in the past? And what resources do you have to get through to to what's next for you, which as we know, I talked about in my other um, videos that the weather always changes. These emotional states, these beliefs, they shift, our circumstances shift, they're not forever. So I invite you to grab a large piece of paper. It works best if you have something a little bit bigger. Here, I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking about. Um, hold up a second, I'm pulling it out because I'm doing this on the fly. <laughs> so I'm like, let's show you what I have. This is at 11 by 17. Here's a Bristol one. This is fancy. You don't have to get fancy. You can go to the dollar store and you know, get paper. But you want to get a larger size piece of paper so you can make your, um, your narrative map there it is, <laughs> on a pretty decent sized piece of paper. So what I recommend, and I'm not gonna show you any examples um, just because number one, I don't have them in front of me right now. And number two, I want you to kind of do this with what resonates for you. So if I showed you my maps, then you'd be like, oh, this is how I should do it. But we're looking at the, the narrative of your life. What is your life story? So you can look at this page and think about, okay, my life story on this page. Where's my past? Where do I want to put my past? Maybe you want to put it down here. Maybe you want to put it over here. Where's my, my present, right? Where, where's my present? And where's my future? So what does this look like? And if you made it look like a road, let's say that it's kind of a map or a road of your life experiences. When you're in the, the section that's your past, 
what experiences you've had, and you can write words down, you can make symbols or images representing these past experiences. And maybe what are some of the resources? Who was there? What did you learn? And then when you go into the present, what's the present look like on this map or this road? And who's with you? What's happening? Is it bumpy? Is it stormy? Is there dips? You know, whatever it looks like, just a visual representation of this present moment. And then moving into the future, where is it that you're wanting to go? What does it look like there? Who might be there? What might be happening? How might you be feeling? So we're moving into this full range of, of your narrative, of your story, of your, your epic uh, you know, expression, the, 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 the ode to you, you know, this, this beautiful odyssey of your life. And, and however it shows up, there's no right or wrong. There's no judgment. This is just an experience to create. Now, when you create this, you can choose any materials. If you're working with that, the Bristol paper, you can then work with paints or you can work with chalks or markers, whatever you have is fine. And if you wanna use the materials to reflect those states, that's great too. You might even wanna pop things off the page. Maybe like you're using some Play-Doh or some modeling clay to have things kind of rise up off the page as a representation of your experiences. Um, be mindful that when you create this, hold this with a state of compassion hold this piece of art with a bit of empathy. And I like to say to people like, you're holding, when you make art, you're holding almost like a piece of your soul or someone's soul. So be mindful that this is an expression of your internal, um, your internal needs, what, is, what needs to be expressed. Please be mindful of not getting into judgy. Judgy isn't gonna help you if you're like, well, I don't know how to make that. This looks like crap. That's not this project. There's Pinterest for that people. <laughs> this is not Pinterest. This is about your process. So when you're vulnerable enough to put things down, be in a state of respect for what shows up and compassion for it maybe not looking the way that you want it to look and holding it, right? This is about you being able to be and bear witness to your experiences, your expression without excessive judgment. And be mindful of not showing it to those around you. I know that people like to make art and then they're like, what do you think? Da, 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 I did this, put it up online. And then you have people judging on you. Um, and that may not be in your best interest. This may be something that you do just to help gain understanding of your experiences, looking at your processes and your, your stuckness, right? The cycles of stuckness, also your resilience. So how's that post-traumatic growth looked for you over the years? And how can you tap into that right now when things are feeling maybe a bit overwhelming? I hope this helps. If you have comments or things to add, please put them down in the comment section below. And if this doesn't work for you, that's okay too. Um, I'll be serving up other videos as well. So thanks so much for connecting. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.